She remarried a Scotsman named Hugo Reed in 1837. On 13th Street. Then turn right onto Valley Drive. <laughs> 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 Bill's Pancake House and I'm just going to give you a little bit of history so you can know where we're going. Uncle Bill's Pancake House here in Manhattan Beach. Although originally constructed as a house before the turn of the century, the building that is now Uncle Bill's Pancake House remains mostly unchanged. It continues to exhibit the charm and nostalgia of the once sleepy and relaxed downtown beach atmosphere. After the end of World War II in 1945, a large influx of people came as a result of the desirability of the area for year-round living. Servicemen visiting during the war returned to live here. The development of the defense industry brought many people to the South Bay to reside and work. Much of the land east of Sepulveda was developed to house the influx of people. As a result, Uncle Bill McElroy Later, Uncle Nate later opened Uncle Bill's in 1961. Actually, half of it was Uncle Bill's. The South End was a barber shop until 1999. A gentleman named P. Allen Van Amberg bought the restaurant in 1973, remodeled the place a bit, and added a few tables. In 2000, the restaurant expanded again into the space vacated by the barber shop and opened the outdoor patio that we'll see later. Today, the restaurant remains in the Van Amberg family who are happy to welcome us for breakfast and lunch every day. Uh, and? Right. So good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like, show me what side is it? Make sure you right here. That's your good side. All right, we got some other. Thank you. Appreciate it. The Manhattan Beach Pier was built in 1920 and is a state historic landmark, as it is the oldest concrete pier on the West Coast. The pier was designed by A. L. Harris in 1916 to replace the old iron pier that blew down in the storm of 1913. There were several delays with the construction. The city trustees did not approve the plans until September of 1917. Construction was started, but then was delayed because the first contractor went bankrupt and the project was later transferred to a second contractor who finished the main pier structure after World War I. The grand opening of the 928 foot long pier was finally held on July 5th, 1920. However, the pavilion or the roundhouse at the end of the pier and the bathhouse weren't completed until July 1922. The bathhouse was located beneath the pier deck at the base or foot of the pier. This facility included bathing suit rentals, beach umbrella rentals, 360 lockers and changing rooms. During the 1920s to 30s, visitors to Manhattan Beach came to experience a day at the beach or a day of fishing. The Manhattan Beach Pier was immediately known for its fine fishing. Many people rode the trolley from inland to catch large sea bass, yellowfin, and halibut. In 1924, a 200-foot-long wooden extension was added to the end of the pier. 
It remained in service until it was completely destroyed by the winter storms of 1940 and 1941. The pier continued to be enjoyed during the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. For the opening celebration of the 1984 LA Olympics, there was a July 4th tall ship parade of sail past the pier with a parade of both large sailing ships and small sailboats. There were thousands of viewers for that event. However, over the years, the pier has been subjected to large waves from winter storms, but perhaps none as fearsome as the waves that hit the pier in January of 1988. It was necessary to close the pier because the tops of the waves were sometimes above the deck level. The cumulative effect of the winter storms had badly eroded the pier. In 1984, a 150-pound chunk of concrete fell on a jogger, paralyzing him. A chain-link net was installed to protect joggers, and a committee was formed to consider a restored pier versus a new pier with a restaurant on the end. It was ultimately decided that the existing pier would be structurally reworked. The California Department of Parks and Recreation was involved and acted on the recommendation of the Manhattan Beach Council in 1989. The resulting restoration was begun in February 1991 and completed in July of 1992. You turn around, walk it backwards. There's not much pressure on your front thighs. Now it's changing to your back thighs. And nah. Butt. Really? Try it. No. Okay. Focus. Johnny, <laughs> focus. <laughs> Natalie has us walking up the steep incline. <laughs> How you doing back there, baby? I'm breathing. There you go. This part is actually less of an incline than the other part where we. True. Can. Yeah. So. Get your cardio in for the day out here. All right. We're getting all nice and sweaty. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, look at look where you came from. Look where the Lord brought you from. You still. <laughs> you right. If you're in the area and you ever need a 24-hour eatery, you can go to the kettle. They have American food. Oh. Nice. nice. San Marino is a residential city in Los Angeles County which was incorporated in April 1913. With a median home price of $2.6 million, San Marino is one of the most expensive and exclusive communities in the United States. This city takes its name from the ancient Republic of San Marino in Italy, founded by St. Marinus, who fled his home in Dalmatia, which is now modern day Croatia, at the time of the Diocletian persecution of Christians. The city of San Marino in California was originally occupied by a village of Tongva or Gabrielinho Indians, located approximately where the Huntington School is today. Businessman Henry Edwards Huntington was born on February 27, 1850 in Anionanta, New York. Henry and his uncle Collis P. Huntington were leaders in building the railroads that spanned the country. In 1892, Henry moved to San Francisco to represent Huntington's interests on the Pacific Coast. In 1902, two years after the death of Collis, Huntington transferred his headquarters to Los Angeles and started to connect, consolidate, and extend the electric railway system in Southern California, also called the Red Cars. He had large land holdings in Southern California and numerous business interests. In 1903, he bought the San Marino Ranch, now the Huntington. He married Arabella Duval Huntington, the widow of Collis, in 1913. Together they amassed extensive library, art, and botanical gardens that continue to evolve. In August of 1919, they signed a trust document that transformed their private estate into a public institution, making their collections available to promote the public welfare. Henry died in 1927. Arabella predeceased him by three years. The Huntington opened publicly to visitors in 1928. 
Here at the Huntington, you can experience the actual library, which has about 11 million items dating from present time all the way back to the 11th century. You can see the museum, which has a massive collection of European and American art dating back to 500 years ago. Outside, you can walk through the botanical gardens, which have over 200 acres of land, where you can see themed gardens, tea houses, specialty shops, waterfalls, and seasonal flowers. In addition to all this, the library provides a vehicle for extensive research on diverse topics in partnership with USC and provides educational resources for scholars from grade school to grad school. Definitely a place worth visiting. So to my right here, we have um, the Orbit Pavilion. As you can see, there's some sounds coming out of there and this sign here um, describes what those are. So this says, stand in the middle of Orbit Pavilion. The sounds you hear represent the location of NASA satellites orbiting and observing Earth's surface, biosphere, atmosphere, and ocean. Orbit Pavilion allows NASA's satellites to say hello as they move across the sky by comparing the live trajectory data of each spacecraft to artistically created sounds. There are two phases of the Orbit Pavilion soundtrack. The sounds in phase one represent the real-time motion of satellites. The sounds in phase two include 24 hours of movement compressed into one minute, allowing you to hear a full day's worth of orbits. Don't miss the related beautiful science exhibition in the Dibner Hall of the History of Science. Brandy, what's your name? Oh, Brandy. Jennifer, Brandy. Okay. That's my husband, Brandy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I've seen you once. Hey, girl, how you doing? You smell nice. Say hi, Jennifer. Hi. Too late. You are way too late. Oh, we're going into the dip. To the dip. That's what they were saying. Conservatory. 
says about half of the almost 10,000 kinds of succulent plants are native to areas with less rain or cold than is typical for Southern California. Others are so small and fragile that they could not compete with other plants in our desert garden. This conservatory was constructed to provide protection for some 3,000 kinds of these more delicate plants. Let's go. have dinner at Magnolia House here in Pasadena. It's a 100 year old craftsman house in South Pasadena that started as a family home, later became a post prohibition liquor store, and many other modern businesses after that. Now it's been reinvented once again into a neighborhood gathering place. Magnolia House now offers unique craft cocktails and a small plate menu for 